First, thank you very much to the organizers for inviting me to be a discussant. Um, I, I really like both of these talks, and uh, I just want to warn you, I prepared my slides based on earlier versions, so I'll try to update as I go along, <laughs> uh, because the, the presentations actually uh, are much more elaborate and I think much more interesting uh, because of it. Uh, so I think both of these studies are impressive and thought-provoking um, with two different questions. So Martin's question is, do bilingual children perform more efficiently in experimental tasks than monolingual peers? And Sorace uh, focuses on L1 attrition and L2 acquisition and where they meet. <clears throat> Uh, I think both studies provide rich food for thought and even richer now that I see the real talks uh, concerning exactly what is influencing what in bilinguals' performance on both linguistic tasks um, and non-linguistic tasks. Uh, and the non-linguistic task in particular that they're interested in is EF. Um, they both attempt to separate these factors um, influencing performance on bilinguals and monolinguals. Uh, they both uh, take a look at different types of bilinguals to explore the generality of effects, uh, type being um, uh, social context, uh, L1 learner, L2 learner, early bilingual, and so forth, and the uh, relationships between the languages of the bilinguals. Um, Martin is particularly interested in the influence of language proficiency on performance, um, speed of processing, and accuracy in cognitive tasks. Um, so she compares baseline performance, labeling performance, nonverbal cue performance, and so forth for accuracy and reaction time, comparing monolinguals and bilinguals bi and bilingual children in distinct social and country contexts. Uh, one of the major findings is that language proficiency correlates with speed, speed of processing and, in particular, reaction time in proactive interference tasks. I think that's the very strong effect that she gets throughout uh, the two studies. Um, she also looks at the performance on monitoring tasks and uh, finds that those who are especially proficient also uh, have higher reaction or lower reaction times on monitoring tasks. Um, and in turn, uh, she looks at the relationship of uh, performance in distinct tasks and finds that those who are good at monitoring also and who have high proficiency are also uh, perform differently in implicit learning tasks in that they have a steeper, uh, steeper learning curve. Um, Sorace explores the role of cognition, especially executive function, in the linguistic performance of bilinguals, um, particularly comparing performance on overt and null pronouns with the use of articles with generic nouns. Uh, again, comparing bilinguals with monolinguals, different types of bilinguals. Uh, she she uh, argues that executive function is uh, has an effect on the use of overt and null pronouns in Italian by these speakers, um, and it has to do with the referential ambiguity of the use of these pronouns in relation to the interface between syntax and pragmatics. Um, she addresses separate contributions of processing and transfer to bilinguals' performance. So she argues that both are in evidence um, in the use of these overt pronouns. Um, 
So in the processing can be seen, or differences in processing can be seen for all bilinguals in the overuse of overt pronouns, um, and also underuse of null pronouns. Uh, but transfer effects can be seen in that English, Italian bilinguals have greater use of bare nouns for generics and more overuse of overt pronouns than uh, Spanish, Italian bilinguals. Um, she also proposes an interesting trade-off in bilinguals performance between integration and upgrading in linguistic processing and inhibitory control. Um, so integration and updating, she argues that monolinguals have an upper hand relative to bilinguals there, and inhibitory control bilinguals have the upper hand relative to monolinguals. Um, and the competition between the resources um, using both of these are responsible for bilinguals difficulties with referential ambiguity in the null overt pronoun use. So the strengths of these talks I think um, have to do with number one that they attempt to uncover in more detail what factors contribute to bilinguals performance and um, I see that both of them have added uh, many many more factors than initially they had, and uh, I think that's laudable to try and sort those out. Um, they both have to do with language proficiency, um, how it contributes to performance on linguistic and interference tasks, especially speed of processing, um, and what the role of the language balance is in, and the environment on performance. Um, where both of them argue that the type of bilingual matters, uh, whether it's having to do with range of proficiency, the environment in which the bilingual is uh, learning the two languages, uh, which two languages are involved with l 2 ers and so forth. Um, they also address the role of executive function and cognition in general linguistic performance, particularly Sorace's uh, talk, um, then, and examine the contributions of processing limitations to bilinguals language performance. And uh, well, in the earlier version, she tried to identify the locus of interaction between the two languages um, and delineate the linguistic subst subsystems that are and are not affected by executive function, processing limitations, and transfer. So I have some specific questions, and uh, I might try to modify these a little bit now. So in Martin's uh, work, I would ask um, how she envisions the relationship between these different factors that seem to be correlated, now that I see her diagram, her beautiful diagram, with all the arrows and the various factors added in, uh, many of which um, I think we can keep adding to them, as she said. So uh, she introduces language use and uh, many other additional variables that affect performance. So how does she see those as related to each other? Are, they, are there knock-on effects from one to the other? Or is one of them, like language proficiency, sort of responsible for all the effects? Or is something else uh, responsible for the correlations that we have here? Uh, a question for um, Antonella has to do with her proposal about the uh, trade-off between control of inhibition and uh, integration. Um, I now understand better, having heard her talk, what, what she's proposing there, but I still have some questions about, for example, the early bilinguals versus the late bilinguals. Uh, she argues that early bilinguals are better at disengaging inhibition um, and therefore are, have an easier time at integration. And I wonder, given some of the talks earlier today, if some of that has to do with the range of automaticity involved 
in early bilingual proficiency versus L2, late L2 proficiency. Uh, some more general questions. Um, both of them have to do with linguistic proficiency. Uh, Martin has uh, shown clear effects of language proficiency on performance. Um, at least in her earlier version, Sorace raises the question or as an, in, a, in an aside of whether the items are not completely acquired by these L2 bilinguals. And I think that's, that's a question that should be pursued a little more, particularly because she also notes that younger monolingual control children also accept in, inappropriate overt pronouns, and as well as the autistic individuals. So I think that question about uh, incomplete mastery of these forms needs to be pursued a little bit more. Um, another general question I have is, what about general cognition? So these have to do with EF and language performance. What about general cognition? How does general cognitive abilities feed into these matters? Uh, I don't think we understand that very well yet. Um, and how do, how do the effects of general cognitive knowledge influence performance on these items relative to other things that we know affect language performance and possibly EF performance, such as exposure and SES? So there's plenty of research showing that those affect performance on language tasks. Um, the question is how do the cognitive, how does cognitive knowledge uh, interact with those in determining performance? And once we get beyond language for uh, executive function tasks, how about language proficiency itself and the fact of being bilingual or monolingual, can we see a way of trying to sort out the contributions of each of those things? So in order to kind of get a first look at this, uh, I took some of our data from uh, some studies we did in Wales with bilinguals there. And uh, we had some EF tasks, but also uh, uh, ta tasks for Receptive vocabulary in English, the BPVS. Receptive vocabulary in Welsh, PGC. Uh, receptive ability with English grammar and with Welsh grammar. Um, <clears throat> granted, these are not the kind of complex structures that Antonella was talking about, but I wanted to kind of get a sense of how these things would come together in determining performance on those tasks. Uh, we also had a uh, performance on McCarthy scales of children's abilities. That's a general cognitive measure. And the Ravens colored progressive matrices for the older people. Um, just to note on the McCarthy, we only used, we tried to choose the sub tasks that least involved language. So uh, pictorial memory does involve language. But uh, these others fit into other components of the scale, and several of them involve memory. So we wanted to get at the, the most non-linguistic tasks that we could see cognitive performance on. Um, we have monolingual English speakers, bilinguals from only English homes, Welsh and English homes, only Welsh homes, which are indicators of exposure to the two languages. And we have a uh, performance of children from ages three on up to older adults. So the questions uh, I wanted to ask was, does general cognitive performance affect language ability? That's the first question. So in order to look at that, uh, I've tried to draw up correlations between cognitive, the cognitive measures and linguistic performance. And then, if the correlations came out significant, regression analyses that involved linguistic performance and executive function performance relative to the variables of cognitive ability, home language, exposure, 
uh, SES as judged by the parents' professions and education, and then for executive function also language ability and whether or not they were monolingual or bilingual. So here's just a glimpse. This is the McCarthy uh, performance relative to BPVS, PGC, both of which are vocabulary, and then the English and Welsh grammar at four, four ages. So uh, first I'll give you all. You have all of the children together, then the bilinguals only, and then the monolinguals only. Um, and these are just correlations. So there's the three-year-olds. You can see there are multiple correlations there, uh, as there are with the other age groups just with general cognitive ability. Um, here's the Ravens, similar layout for primary school age children, teens, younger adults, and older adults. There's the primary school age children. You can see some of those correlations are quite high, uh, as they are also with the other groups. So given those correlations, let's look at the regression. So regression on the BPVS performance with predictor variables of age and months, home language, this is per age group, home language, uh, the McCarthy or Ravens, and SES. Okay, so, um, so at age three, I'm just showing you the, mod the most complete model uh, and the factors that contribute to it. You can see there uh, the McCarthy contributes quite a bit. Age four, same thing. And you can see home language and SES are also in there in uh, predictive variables. Age five, again, and primary age. Um, here's with uh, the BPS relative to the Ravens. There's the primary age children, uh, it's actually the highest predictor uh, for that age. Teens, younger adults, older adults. So the cognitive ability in general seems to affect performance, not just EF ability. Uh, how about on an EF task? So I just picked out one task, the Simon task, for the teens, younger, and older adults. And we have uh, accuracy and RT data for both the congruent and incongruent conditions. Um, and the predicted variables uh, that were entered are age and months, whether or not they were monolingual or bilingual, or alternatively their home language, and the results came out similar. Their performance on BPVS uh, as a measure of language in English, performance on the Ravens, and SES level. So, uh, so the four types of tasks are across the top, and the variables entered on the left. So for the teens, for the congruent tasks, only whether or not they were monolingual or bilingual contributed or was a predictor for their reaction time on the congruent task. So that looks pretty good. Um, here's the incongruent task. Both the BPVS contribute um, and the Ravens contribute one to accuracy, the other to reaction time. Here's younger adults. The Ravens seems to, performance in the Ravens contributes quite a bit, especially on the incongruent reaction time. Um, and the older adults, again, we see here monolingual bilingual did contribute for accuracy. Um, and, and language ability contributed for uh, the reaction time for congruent tests. So um, I think these studies are really in the right direction, going in the right direction, um, trying to look at linguistic forms and EF tasks and how they interact. Um, what are the factors that contribute? Um, this is just a beginning list from these tasks, but also uh, people over the last two days have been adding to the list of what factors might contribute. Um, for executive function, the same thing. This is just a beginning. Uh, but I think we have to try and dig away and see how each thing, what weight each thing is contributing to performance. Um, they're all highly correlated, and the 
the weight might differ by age and by task type. Um, and I think these studies, because of their complexity and trying to work out those details, um, are contributing a lot to the study. Oh, that. Thank you.